I hate working in mess. If you hung around any of my workshops over the past couple of years, you'd probably find that hard to believe. But kind of like a boiled frog, I finally came to the realization that it was time to do something about it. So I actually started by collecting this old engineering desk that you can see here. If you follow any of my social media, you would have seen the process of collecting that, which was a bit of a mission. Unfortunately, because I'm incredibly obsessive, once I got the drawers in place, I couldn't stop and I had to organize my entire workspace. I had put this off for quite a while because I knew it would be such a large undertaking, but as they say, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, the second best time is now. So I decided to get going and my next step was going to be to get some work cabinets that I could use to store fixings, tools, all those sort of things. So once I decided that I was going to get some cabinets, I did what I normally do, which is spend a very large amount of time researching and being indecisive. My main consideration for this project was definitely cost. So something like King Chrome is out of the question. I'm also not convinced of their quality much anymore, to be honest. And so that led me to search other units. There's these ones here, which were not too bad at $1,300 odd dollars for a decent size, 1880, but too large to put two side by side and too small just to have the one of them. So I kept searching. I found these Vita XL sort of no name ones, also a little bit large for side by side at 1.4 each. So I settled on these Mech Pro Blue, which are black and I decided actually in the end on getting four of them because these were down on sale from 750 to 525 and I actually ended up getting them for $400 each. So I loaded up the stager to do two trips, one on the roof, one inside, and then we had to find a spot to put all the waste. Tree. It was a big tree. <sighs> Quick little check to make sure that that's not going anywhere and time to head home. This bench has served me well and actually came from our previous place that I built during lockdown just out of some scraps that I had laying around so it did its job. Actually a shame to have to get rid of it because it was quite sturdy but I just don't have the space or the need for it at the moment so I'll probably hoard all of the material for a little while to come and then give it away or throw it away after storing it for many years. Now it's time to determine what configuration I want the drawers in and after a little bit of playing around I basically ended up with what you see there. I don't know what I did with the footage, but when the cabinets are together, there's actually a small lip at the bottom, which you can see me beating down now. And that actually prevented them from getting as close as they could back to back and side to side. So a little bit of general persuasion and that sorted that out pretty quickly. I also make zero apologies for my outfit. It was about 38 degrees that day and it was hot. It's hot. Told you. These are looking much nicer now and much closer together, so it's time to take the bench tops off and see what's going on underneath. But first, I would like to get rid of these badges. I also started removing this sticker on the side, but when it didn't come off immediately, I decided that I'd had enough for the day. Okay, new day, so outfit change. I'm going to pull the drawers out and then remove all the screws from underneath the bench tops. Pretty sure these screws are made out of cheese, that's why Bear's here to check them out, but I managed to get most of them out without too much of an issue. You can see on the underside here, they've all got nut certs, which is actually quite good. The quality of the joinery, not the best, but I think it's pretty fair to assume that they wouldn't expect people to pull the bench tops off and have a look underneath. So anyway, good enough for what they are. Of all the screws, I only managed to destroy the head on one of them, so I just spun this bench top around to relieve the tension and then disposed of it appropriately. Even though you saw me beat down that lip before, you can see these still don't align the best. It's due to the unevenness of the tiles, but I'll be able to pick up that difference once I put the bench top on. If you follow any of my social media, you'll know that I had a blowout in the stager a little while ago. I did replace all of the valves, but for whatever reason, one of them is still leaking. So I pumped this bad boy back up and it was off to the other side of the world to pick up the bench top. I can't stay mad though. I do love these wheels. A little bit of wax and grease remover on there to get rid of any residue and then navigate this bench top around. Oh bit. my God. You were practicing standing in the way. Oh my god. The bench top is solid oak and 2400 by 960 by 70 mil thick. 
quick little alignment to make sure I'm happy with it and then on to everyone's favorite part, prep work. Quick change down to 120 grit. Don't ask me why I did this because I knew it was a bad idea but I used this damp microfiber to wipe off all the sawdust and as you can imagine it kind of picked up all of the little fibers because um, it was such a rough grit that I used to sand down the top and then attached itself to it like velcro so that was great. And you can see there me realizing that the gentleman that I bought this bench top off decided to give me one with a huge burn mark on the underside. My fault for not checking properly when I picked it up, so I allowed myself a little minute there to have a whinge and feel sorry for myself, and then I got stuck into sanding this side. Then more sanding on the top side to remove the burrs I left from the microfiber and also the marks that I left from the cabinets. I decided on a satin finish for the varnish because that's what I normally choose and I picked this brand for no reason whatsoever. As with all paint prep though, it was worth it once I could apply the varnish and it all went on as well as I could expect it to with a paintbrush. Don't ask me why I chose to wear a mask when I was sanding and not when I was doing this. All I can say is maybe my brain was still fried from the heat the other day. I let the varnish set and then a quick sand with 240 and I felt safe enough to use the microfiber again to get rid of the dust. The tin of varnish basically recommended that you do at least three coats for fresh or uncoated timber. Um, so I decided to do two coats on the top, flip it over, three coats on the underside, flip the top back over again, and then another two coats on the top. So four on the top surface and three on the bottom surface. It also kind of amounted to a little bit more on the sides as you can imagine, but I don't think that it'll be too much of an issue. Before I was to do the very final coat on the top, I flipped it over to the underside and marked out where I was going to put all the screws. I decided that I would like to do nut certs as well, like the original bench tops, but just to start out, I figured I'd put some small pilot holes and then just some small wood screws just to make sure that I put the holes in the right spot before I overcommitted and put a large hole for the nut cert in the wrong spot. I know it's a little bit indecisive, but that's what I chose to do. One final sand and coat of varnish for the underside also to make sure that I got it in the fresh screw holes and then flip it over finally to the top side to do the final coat there. I decided that before the final coat I would use a finer grit sandpaper than what I had for the DA so I've got some 400 here and I just sort of knocked the top off with that. It didn't do heaps you can see here in the sped up footage that it has done something but Probably a waste of time, I don't know. Anyway, I put the final coat on and then I let it set for a few days so that I could try and harden it up a bit. For the drawer organizers, I decided that I would make them all multiples of 50 millimeters because it's a nice round number and it makes me happy. And on the bottom, I decided to put a little bit of texture there so that it's a bit easier to collect small items when there's not many left in the container. I made them a few different shapes and sizes and then started to print them out so that I could begin filling the drawers. I did also try and play with the idea of making this grid here so that it would allow me to organize them all a little bit easier. But in the end, it wasn't something that I was happy with and I decided just to print them individually and stack them tight enough so that they wouldn't move around in the drawers. You'll notice that the ones shown here are a little bit shorter than the ones that I showed you in the model. They're 50 millimeters tall as opposed to the 70 millimeters tall. And that's because I started modeling them up before I got the drawers. And it turns out that the drawers are a little bit deeper than advertised in terms of actual usable space. And I wanted to utilize that extra 20 mil. You can also see an example here of why I try not to program the printers at 2 a.m. because I make stupid mistakes. 
The majority of the containers I printed at the 50 by 50 size, but then I also printed a bunch of the 100 by 50 in both orientations, so longer and wider. Because I committed to that 50 by 50 size and the drawers are not a multiple of 50, you can see on the far edge there, there's some slightly narrower containers. Those are actually 40 mils wide. I did decide originally to print the labels that I was gonna put in, but as I suspected might happen, because there's so many variations and so many different sizes and obscure screws and fixings that I've got, it will just be easier for me to handwrite them initially. And then once I decide on the layouts, I'll probably come back and print them at that time. So to resist the temptation of overthinking it like I normally would, I just decided to print a whole bunch of different size containers. As I said, I'll work it out as I go along what combination I'm gonna need in terms of sizes in certain locations. Then once I'm happy with it, I'll print some more professional looking labels and commit to the layouts. In the meantime, I'll just sort of work it out as I go along. Although these storage containers that I've been using are quite good, they're also incredibly frustrating to try and get all the little pieces out of. I don't know why I didn't just consider doing it this way in the first place, but how easy was that? Another result of the drawers being that uneven size is that extra gap at the back here. And you can see that the top row, you can't actually read the labels anyway, even if I was to build containers that would fit perfectly. So I just decided to print a little spacer for the back to help keep everything locked in place and stop it from sliding around when I operate the drawer. I designed these to be hollow in the center so that they would print more quickly as that space doesn't need to be occupied anyway. Then they just clip together as you see there and they run all the way along the back and space everything out nice and evenly. So to summarize, I'd say it's been a pretty successful exercise. All the containers have worked as I've wanted them to and I've given them a little test run here with one of the simulator adapters. I've already started working on a bunch of other bits and pieces to add to the drawers, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Actually, there is just one more thing. I was reminded of another issue that I've been avoiding for a little while now that I'm back to working on the Corolla and that's this drill press. Seeing as I'm upgrading things I could probably go just a little bit bigger. This should do the trick.